Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just uh, finished my coffee and uh, breakfast of the oat burst instant porridge is well and truly down in the old tummy. Um, yeah, and last night's dinner, pot noodle. I've got no supplies, so I've uh, been just making it up as I go along. Um, I'm out in a van, I'm in Scotland. Part in um, Melockery, Melockery Bay or whatever it's called. I'm in a car park. This is an amazing car park. Toilets with hot water and everything. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. I'm going to fill up my water supplies and everything. I'm out in the van, obviously. Um, I'm heading sort of southward. I'm going to go sort of maybe Moffat, Galloway area, or even down the coast and have a look down there on the way down today. But before I start, outside my door is the uh, Loch Lomond Lone Tree. Now, last night when I turned up, it was really grim, miserable. And last night, it has been absolutely belting down with rain. But Last night I took a couple of phone snaps, they're going to be black and white, high contrast probably. Um, literally just stood outside the van, took a few snaps because it wasn't worth getting the tripod out because it was just horrendous. The water was dead calm at one point, just before I went to bed it was really, really, really calm. Um, so I might be able to make a shot out of it, sort of a bit of a minimal sort of style, sort of black and white, high contrast image maybe. But yeah, I don't know, you'll see. But I do think I'm going to get a shot of this this morning because it's been raining overnight. The water level is way, way higher, it's about eight or nine foot closer to the tree it's actually just touching the tree at the moment uh, the tree's not actually surrounded with water which is a dead shame but it's still going to give you that lone tree sort of style looking back with the mountains and the hillsides in the background so i'm going to get out of the van i've only got my shorts and that on um yeah i'm going to jump out and, and just get a couple of shots and then we're going to head off and uh, we'll carry on the video somewhere else in um, some other location so uh yeah let's get this done bit of a breeze down here but I think I'll uh, set up and go for a simple basic classic first of all keeping it quite low and having the tree sort of poking up through the skyline um, I've got some filters as well so I'm gonna slap on a couple of filters and make the exposure a longer exposure the sky is clearing it's becoming blue which I'm sort of in a way thankful for even though I don't like blue skies but it's been horrendous weather the last few days and uh, I've got quite wet in all fairness <laughs> very wet even the trees in front of me I've got a wide angle lens on because it's the only lens I've got with the adapter to fit these filters that I've got um, so let's just switch her all on put it on to single shot and uh, take the lens cap off which is always an added bonus and let's see how close we can get with this Okay, so this is going to start off with a very simple slap in the middle shot. I'm going to bracket the shot actually because I want to see if I can retain some detail in the actual tree itself. And the first one is going to be a very simple mounted in the background tree lifting up into the blue sky. And uh, that's it, it's job done. <laughs> it's very, very quick and very, very easy just to try it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a single shot on. This is going to probably end up with a tree being quite contrasty because the light was on it just now, now the light's gone, which is just typical. Every time you get the camera out of the car, something changes. Um, but I do want to put these filters on and see if, what it's like, an actual filter on there and sort of making this water a bit smoother. So for a bit of a treat, I haven't got my, these are my standard filters. For a bit of a treat, I've got a, a new pack of filters. Um, I'm just going to show you these ones really. This is the uh, KNF filter kit uh, with adapter ring. This is the Nano X series kit. Um, 8K Ultra HD, uh, multi-layer coatings, waterproof and anti-scratch coatings. The filter kit comprises of a magnetic ring. This is an 82mm kit, which is why I've got to use my adapter for the 82 on the wide angle. Uh, you've got a, a GND, which is an ND Grad 8. You've got an ND8, you've got an ND64 and an ND1000. And an MRC82, which is your magnetic ring. Uh, comes in this really nice little... Uh, pouch. Oh, I'm just throwing everything away. Oh. Don't we let her in the beach. So let's put that case away before I carry on and show you the rest. Oh. Right, so the case is quite nice. It's a very swish, very nicely filled, made case. You've got a, a Velcro strap on the back there to put it on your belt if you want. You've also got a D-ring so you can hang it on to a uh, tripod like I normally do and you've also got this magnetic flapper like 
Uh, so the, 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 the zip has got like a, a waterproof seal, so it keeps a bit of the moisture out. But I like the fact that it folds flat down and then you can just use the magnetic, magnetic flap to actually keep it closed when you're actually using them. So I quite like that. So you just keep zipping it back up. Um, you see inside you get your adapter rings with your filters and these are all magnetic and you even get that grad which is pretty cool so we might be able to try that out here today and see what it works like so this is what we're going to use so first of all before i do anything uh, i've got a 72 to 82 mil it steps up my step up ring uh, you just basically buy the step up rings for this kit to make them fit your lenses um, you can buy the actual filter size for your lens but then if you go for a bigger lens or you change lenses at any time you've got to buy a bigger filter kit so buy the biggest you can i always get 82 mil and every filter is always 82 mil because i know that i can always step my rings up from 58 to 82 72 to 82 77 to 82 very very easy to do with a very very cheap and easy step up ring apart from the fact that i've got it stuck on my other lens so i can't actually show you this one actually screwing on so i'm going to be using my uh, original uh, magnetic ring because these filters do fit these um, maven filters as well so uh, that's a bonus you can buy these and add them to them i like it when they use the same filters and same magnets good idea oh i'm just going to get a carabiner to hang this on my tripod oh yeah i like to put a carabiner and a ring on my tripod and i can hang my filters on my tripod and i know they're not going to fall off okay so my composition is set up already it hasn't moved it hasn't changed take the lens cap off and what i'm going to do first of all You've seen that image taken and I'm just going to do a color cast with a 10 stop straight away. So take these filters off and I've just got to take this off. This is the actual ace 2 mil ring that I won't be using. And you can see there, they fit on this um, other adapter ring, which is absolutely fantastic. And like I said, you can just flap your magnetic piece over. So I've got a 10 stop on there, it's giving me three seconds. So I'm literally going to take exactly the same shot. And this is just going to give me a color casting test to see what the color cast is like between having the 10 stop with and without. Right, so I'm quite happy with the fact that I've tried those, the uh, large 10 stop. It's only giving you three seconds of exposure, but it's definitely worth putting on there and having a look. And I'm just interested to see what the grad's like. So I'm going to put the grad on and you can see the grad has got this tone and it's a soft grad as well, which I quite like. And the idea is you can put the grad on and it will tame down the sky. Now I'm at, what, 24 millimeters. And what it's doing, if I can actually click record on my foot camera for you. So let's take this off. Let's drop the exposure a little bit. Right, so I'm just going to press record and I'm just going to slide this filter on. And you can see it's toned down the top of the sky. I'll just move it out of the way again. So the top of the sky is quite bright. So if you're taking like a scene of the mountains, for instance, in the background, you could actually bring that sky back in line with what's going on in the foreground. So I quite like the idea that works really, really well. With it being a soft grad as well, it actually, you don't see the interaction line or the fading as it comes in. It's just such a shame that I can't get, uh, I'm gonna take a shot of this one as well. It's just such a shame I can't get the light on the tree. If the light was to come over the top of this trees behind me and hit that, it'd be fantastic. Because the tree would just light up in front of me. Because it's very, very, very much in shadow. Yeah, there's me grad. I'm going to see if I can do a, a slightly better shot of this uh, somewhere else. So I think I'm going to be moving away from the tree because the tree is too much in shadow. I'm going to have a look at the rocks and get a long exposure on the rocks because I can get up a little bit closer to them. Okay, so I'm not uh, getting up to the rocks and it's no good. They're way too much in shadow. So I'm going to have to abandon this little location. It's not going to work for me. And I'm going to move on and see where the van takes me. So I'll catch you in a split second at some other location somewhere else in Scotland. See you in a bit. You wouldn't believe driving along and I've just come across this and I've just had to make a massive detour uh, just so I can get a quick shot of this rainbow. It's one of the most amazing rainbows I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely spectacular. And this is what happens when you're driving. The best colour is always seen when you're driving the vehicle. Right, so I've literally just moved my van around the corner i've got to get out and go and get a shot of this i'm hoping that the rainbow is going to stay there long enough because there's a little lighthouse in the middle of this uh, water if i can get in a position to get this shot it's going to be amazing i'm literally sort of scooting along the shoreline here and i want to try and get the lighthouse bang in the middle i've already taken a couple just in case but i want to get the lighthouse right in the middle by moving along it's creeping along the middle of that rainbow 
and it's staying long enough that I might just be able to get this shot of this lighthouse right in the middle of that rainbow and I think <laughs> it's pretty wicked and I'm quite made up and got a big smile on my face because that is awesome. I haven't given up on the filters either. I've still got the uh, grad filter on, which I think is working really, really well. I'm just going to move closer as well. I'm going to put the lighthouse just off centre, uh, the light because the rainbow is just staying and staying and staying. So I'm going to put the lighthouse off centre so I can get a clearer picture of the of the water next to it as well. Because at the, I had the railings in, I've got to do a bit of fancy Photoshop work. But if I do it just off centre, I should be able to get rid of the railings in the fence as well. So. We'll see, I might even be able to move the lighthouse to the middle if I'm really, really clever. Amazing, that was well worth a very quick emergency pullover stop. That was brilliant. I literally am parked right next to the little, I could see this little lighthouse thing in the water as I was driving down the motorway. And I could see this water, this rainbow appearing. I'm like, oh my God, why is it always you get the best, best, best conditions when you're driving? And all I wanted to do was have a look at these filters. But I did put the filter on just now and try and do a 10 stop one but the rainbow had disappeared. Um, but the actual grad, the soft grad's really, really good because it does tone that sky down. And you'll see in the two different images, the one with, this, with the grad and without the grad. But yeah, what a perfect, there's a workshop here. What a perfect, perfect place to have a garage. Oh my God, he's got the best view in the planet. Wow. literally stopped on the middle of the road uh, I just want to show you this through the window because this is amazing look at this for the waterfall I've actually come to have a look at this waterfall but I can't actually see a way down there uh, but that looks pretty amazing uh, if there's a parking bay up around the corner I'm gonna pull in and see if I can get something but at the moment all I can see is this um, passing place and I don't think it's a good idea to pull into the passing place and then make my way down over the fence but that looks like a pretty good waterfall down there. So I don't know quite what to do. I'll see if I can park up in this area up here. And if I can park up here, uh, I might see if there's a pathway down there. But I definitely don't fancy going off piste like we did in the last video or another video that I did where there's no, no, I wouldn't. I can't go off my own. Um, I just need to know there's a place up here. Now I'm all right parking here uh, this is a big passing place this is but yeah there's no actual footpath to that uh, to that waterfall so uh, ah, maybe another one I'll have to cross off my list and hit the continue button on my map and see what happens <laughs> and go to the next location so I'm out driving across the moorland at the moment um, sort of making my way south there's some amazing looking torrents of water down in all these valleys and things but there's nowhere to park. Oh, I've just seen a photo. I don't know whether it's worth a photo or not. There's a burnt out car here. It's got that sort of ooh, look to it. Wow. Might be worth just taking a shot. I'm just saying, oh my goodness, look at this. That's uh, incredible. A burnt out car. I wonder why. That's a bit mad and insane. Looks like it's been crashed against a post and then burnt out. Right. I'm not going to hang around here for long. <laughs> um, yeah, there might be some waterfalls up there. I might just, uh, I might just check this out for five minutes actually, if I can park on this uh, little area by this car.
my word, it's raining now. We've got some uh, proper rain coming in, so I don't quite know what to do, to be honest. I'll uh, maybe sit in the van for a little while and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. Oh. I hate it when I'm out on these trips like this and it's like this, the weather's like this, it just doesn't inspire me to want to get out at all. I've got the binoculars out and I can see a waterfall right down in that distance, but I'm just parked up next to this extremely burnt out and destroyed vehicle at the moment. Oh. I think I'm going to head back towards the coast. That was where it was brightest, that's where the rainbows were. It looked bleak here. found another waterfall which I can't get to but she's a big one right up in the hills I'll show you ready flip you around and I'll zoom you in through me through me window and you can have a look it's the same as what I can see right up there there's a waterfall right up at the top it looks pretty impressive pretty impressive so that's the good thing about driving around and exploring because you can get to see these, these different things but it doesn't make very good video does it <laughs> made it down to the coast and I'm I've come into a little car park I've driven along a couple of roads it's got really strange names like power station road and uh, oil rig road and I'm actually parked right next to a power power station it's a nuclear power station so I don't know whether I'm supposed to be here or not it didn't stop me coming down here on the sat nav um, I'm looking over to I think the Isle of Arran um, the sea is just in front of me it's pretty rough, it's pretty hectic, and it's hitting the rocks, uh, and the sprays come in this direction every so often. Aaron's looking tasty over in the distance here. I'm pretty sure it's Aaron. Um, let's have a look on the map. I'm pretty sure that that is Aaron out there in the distance. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I've been over there. Um, I think it was pre-video days. I don't know what to do. I don't really feel comfortable parking here. Um, couple of reasons because of the sea I don't really fancy I've seen a couple of I've seen the damage that the sea does when it comes over the top and I'm not sure with a high tides here and I don't know how much spray is going to come over and salt water is not the best for any vehicle let alone being pummeled by salt water spray um, so yeah I don't I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look around I'm gonna have a look on the map see if I can find somewhere just down the road maybe uh, and see yeah <laughs> I don't know I've actually landed. I'm at uh, Port and Cross, uh, near Port and Cross Castle. Um, the height barrier is 2.2 meters, so it means I can get my van in. Um, I can't see any restrictions anywhere about saying they don't want me to stop tonight. Um, so I might stop here. I'm right next to the sea, which is lovely. I can listen to that tonight. I've got the Isle of Arran over in the distance, which is looking pretty dramatic at the moment with all the light rays and that going on and the, the rain showers dropping into the ocean. Um, the sea's looking right rough. So I think I better get out, finish looking at these filters and uh, maybe do a little bit of a comparison. Wow, there's some big waves. Do a little bit of a comparison between the, the 10 stop, the six stop and the four stop, I think it is. And this might be a good opportunity to use that grad as well because I can grab the sky in and uh, get the, the water as well so uh, 
yeah, I'm going to put my trousers on because I've only got my shorts on. Put my boots on for walking. I'm going to walk up to the castle, go up to the pier, and then walk along this coast. And I think by the time I've done that, I'll be ready for some tea. And you'll be bored of listening to me. But yeah, it's pretty atmospheric out there. I quite I like that but I don't think it tells the story of a photo. If I can put some foreground in it with the rocks and the sea, then maybe that'll be pretty interesting. So, that's the plan. That should finish this video off. Okay, so just to let you know, I am outside and you can probably see by the wind on different things that uh, Armageddon's just about to come in. <laughs> Armageddon is definitely on its way. I've just been playing with a couple of exposures, uh, long exposures with the uh, 10 stop on and I started off with my Maven 10 stop because uh, I wanted to do a comparison but the problem is now the weather's starting to come back it's about to rain and the islands that I was shooting over in the distance is gone so at the moment I'm just going to cover up the filters put them back in the bag and uh, yeah wait for this real heavy 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 rainstorm to pass over my head but I think I do think I've just taken an absolutely stonking stonking photograph long exposure <coughs> i have rocks in the foreground in the middle of the sea all the water's fluffed out armageddon's coming in from the right hand side with the bright sky on the left hand side still it's absolutely immense out there but i am absolutely going to get mullard completely mullard because the rain is about to hit me hard Oh my goodness, what a change in the conditions. Just now the sun was on me and it was really, really nice. Now, now it's beating me with rain and I'm hiding behind my bag. Put my bag down front of me here, just hiding my legs behind the, behind the, well, just behind the rain cover really. And I'm hoping the rain shower is just gonna blow over and uh, give me another bit of light because every so often the light is fantastic, really is fantastic here. Uh, I've got all these lovely rocks in the foreground. I think the tide's still coming in, to be honest. I've got a castle just over there as well. I was going to take photographs of, and I, I just love the storms going past Aaron, but oh, there's a big wave. Please don't get too big because I'm going to have to make a right jump if I have to. They're not far away from me, but they're far enough, I think, away to keep it off of me. I hope. So what I'm trying to do now, because uh, the rain has gone over me a little bit more, but I still have to shield the camera from the, the elements because it's still blowing the water spots towards me. I'm trying to work because the wind is coming directly at me. So now I've got the, the grad on, I've got the six stuff on there, um, which is the ND8. Um, and I'm just trying to, or the ND64, sorry. Uh, and I'm just trying to get some movement in this water now and trying to get these lines that I can see in front of me because the lines are lovely. And what that grad's doing, oh, here comes a couple <coughs> of big ones. What that grad's doing is just holding the sky in for me because the sky is very, 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 very bright. So it's just holding that sky in for me just so I can get that texture in the sky. So having that soft grad really does actually help. And I'm just holding the bag in front of it to stop that spray that's coming towards me. And then when I'm ready to take the photograph, I'm lifting it, lifting it up, taking the photograph, and then putting it back down again. <coughs> but it seems to be working and it seems to be working well. I'm going to shoot that direction again in a minute because the, the light is coming across and Armageddon is now on the left and uh, the sunlight's on the right hand side. But yeah, it's just trying to balance everything really. Uh, very, very difficult in these conditions with this type of wind and uh, as this close to the water. But we're managing, we're doing something. Here comes another big wave coming in now. It does seem to be getting a bit closer to me, but hopefully we'll be all right. Oh, 
just drying my glasses. These lens gloss, by the way, are absolutely amazing. Uh, I'll put a link for the description in the description below so you can have a look at these. They're absolutely the best lens gloss I've ever, ever used or even come across. They dry everything, even when they're wet, they dry stuff. And uh, yeah, they're just amazing. Um, I've got another shot set up uh, in my immediate foreground and it's all about the rocks and the lines and the crashing waves. I've got the KNF 10 stop on, um, so we're giving that a bit of a blast. The background's really, really cool. Uh, I don't know if it's too far away to see, but the 10 stop's making this nice fluffy water, which is quite nice. The waves are still crashing. I just like listening to these waves, to be honest. It sounds so good, it really does. One major issue though with these photographs, I'm just had a look on the back of the screen, and that is the foreground, the midground, and the background are too far apart. I need to try and blend them all in together. So I'm gonna have a little walk to see if I can find some better rocks with a little bit of, I can get a little bit lower uh, and try and pour that background in. But the elements are there, I just can't get it to work perfectly. All right, so this is definitely one of those situations where this uh, KNF grad. Uh, will actually work perfectly in my favour. I've got a really dark foreground and the island in the background is really, really bright. So I'm going to take this shot now. I'm going to put my hand in it so I know which one it is. In fact, I'll put the filter in so I know. And then what I'm going to do is take the shot without the filter. And then I'm going to take the shot with the filter and show you the differences between it. Uh, and this really has made a big difference. So I'm going to start keeping this filter on me because there's the odd situation like this at the moment where the sky is so, so bright with the sunlight coming towards me and the foreground being so dark that this filter makes an absolutely perfect addition just to tone that sky down just a little bit and enough to make me get this shot pretty much in one or two exposures instead of a load of exposures. So I think I've done enough playing with these filters for now. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give us that thumbs up <laughs> as usual. I don't know. My video today has been an absolute shambles. I got an amazing sunrise. No, I didn't. I got an amazing uh, rainbow. I got uh, Armageddon. I got boring tree this morning. Yeah, it's been a bit of a mixed bag really. And I've just seen another shot right off in the distance with a boat going between the gaps but I can't really I don't know whether to swap my lens over or not because it get rain in it or these water spots inside so I don't know but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it here um, I think that's the best place uh, until next time until I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow I do actually but I don't I'm going off with Craig tomorrow he's coming to meet me but I don't actually know where we're going or what we're doing so I'll see you there. Ciao for now. Ta-da.